Worldwide sales of video game consoles and software are expected to reach $35 billion this year. That's more than twice the revenue of the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball combined. With hundreds of millions of people playing worldwide, it was perhaps inevitable that sporting competition would develop and give rise to the professional video game player. The very best build themselves as cyber athletes and crisscross the globe competing in tournaments that offer hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money. The number one player is someone called Fatality. That's his screen name anyway. His real name is Jonathan Wendell. Every new sport needs stars and Fatality is the first superstar of video games. If he didn't already exist, someone would have to invent him. <coughs> The best video game player in America lives in this house in Kansas City, Missouri. When we showed up for the interview, Jonathan Wendell was down in the rec room, riveted to his computer screen. He was using a mouse and a keyboard to propel himself through a computer-generated landscape in search of ominous red demons to kill before they kill him. It's how he makes his living and why he calls himself Fatality. He was locked in a virtual death match with his opponents and oblivious to everything around him, including my arrival. Oh, hey, how's it going? Steve Croft. He'd been practicing a game called Painkiller day and night with his friends and sparring partners, one of whom was crashed out on the bed. They were trying to get ready for the next big tournament in Dallas. How long have you been a pro? Uh, it's about six years now. And how much have you won in prize money? I would say a little over 300000 just from just from tournament prize money, yeah. There are parents all over the country that are telling their kids, shut off that video game, you're wasting your time. Yeah, I got that too. <laughs> you're every parent's nightmare. Yeah, it's true. Jonathan, the town of Check your case. At age 24, he has won 41 tournaments, playing the same shoot 'em up video games that you can buy in most stores, and living a life most young men his age can only dream of. He's traveled all expenses paid to every continent except Antarctica. He's played in Red Square and on the Great Wall of China. And everywhere he goes, he's besieged by fans. And I've been a world champion at four different games. So I'm working on my fifth game right now to become a world champion at a fifth different game. And nobody else has done that? No, no, not even close. So you're the best in the world? If you say so. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be modest here, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty good. If he hadn't discovered professional gaming, he would probably be doing tech support for some computer company in Kansas City. He was only 18 at the time and still living at home. What was your mother's reaction when you told her that you wanted to become a professional video game player? Oh, that probably didn't go so well. <laughs> his parents were divorced, so having failed with his mother, he moved in with his dad and went to work on him, offering this deal. I was like, Dad, let me go to this one tournament. If I don't win any money like, or any significant money, I'm going to quit. I I'll just quit. I'll go full-time school, no problem. How would you do? Went to the tournament and actually won $4,000. And I uh, came home and slapped that check on the table. I was like, I go, Dad, I won $4,000 playing a video game. What's this world coming to? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's so insane. Yeah, what the world's coming to is this. 3D huge right at last year's World Cyber Game Championships in San Francisco, the purse totaled more than $400,000. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation, and there it is! 3D wins the World Cyber Game 2004 Grand Finals. The tournaments are often broadcast live over the Internet, complete with play-by-play -play commentary. Shag trying to get two. Can he do it? Shag with two big... 3D huge! There are both individual and team competitions. And coaches with furrowed brows pacing the sidelines. It has the look and feel of a sporting event. Nice job, Corey. Go shake their hand. Go shake their hand. And to Jonathan Wendell, that's exactly what it is. Mercy. It's that fast. In the game, it's all about hand eye coordination, reflexes, timing, strategy, being quick on your feet, being able to think fast. I mean, you gotta be doing everything. He may spend 8 to 12 hours a day in front of a video screen, but don't mistake him for a geek. Like most of the top video game professionals, he's an excellent athlete and was a star on his high school tennis team. I work out a lot, so I, you know, being physically fit and uh, making sure your neurotransmitters are working properly and making sure that you're 
you're on you're on beat and you're ready to go. Your neurotransmitters? Yeah, it's like your neurofit. It's like you ever. Um, it's like it's basically ways so you can think faster. You talk really fast. And also, I talk very fast. <laughs> that's your neurotransmitters. Yeah, that's that's actually my my brain talk uh, thinking way too fast. He says it's like playing chess on caffeine. This exhibition played against the local challenger in Sweden is a good example. Stylish. You have to strategically maneuver yourself through a three-dimensional maze using the controls to collect weapons and ammunition while executing precision moves to evade, trap, and corner your opponent before splattering him all over the dungeon. A detail some people find disconcerting. Sitting there, maybe two, four, six, eight hours a day, trying to kill people. I mean, it's it's a virtual world, but yeah, that's but what like, you're I trying mean, to do. Is, is is that a good thing? I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, you're trying to get the point. Like, I mean, football. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you hitting a guy? It's like, and that that's not right. But it's like people look past it because that's part of the game. I consider him an athlete because marksmanship is an Olympic sport, right? That's twitching the fingers as well. Edward Castronova is a professor at Indiana University who studies and teaches the economics and sociology of video games. The average age of a video gamer is now 30, and you're getting to a point where the number of people who could pay money and spend time to watch is getting big enough to support a spectator sport. You know, I watch my son play video games, right. and I'm sure parents all over the country watch their sons and daughters play right. video games. Sure. Yeah, it's not that exciting. Well, baseball's not exciting to somebody from France, either. <laughs> uh, it's the kind of thing you have to know what's going on inside the game to really appreciate why getting onto that ledge and getting that power up at that moment was just an awesome move that nobody's ever able to do. It's a skill that 30 years from now, a lot of people will understand. They already get it in South Korea. This video game tournament in the country's second largest city drew a crowd of 100,000 people last year, and regular matches draw big ratings on national television. The top Korean players make hundreds of thousands of dollars, date movie stars, and need bodyguards to protect them from their over-enthusiastic fans. And a lot of people are betting that it's only a matter of time before the same thing happens in the U.S and that pro video gaming will eventually take off like skateboarding and extreme sports did a decade ago. Because of the internet, players from all over the world can meet and compete, and it's all happening in real time. Our reigning stereotype of video gamer is a 16-year-old kid who's alone in his basement. That's not really true anymore. So you see it as social intercourse? Yeah, I see it as a very, very broad communication phenomenon. Uh, parallel would be phones, radios, movies, TV. We caught a glimpse of it last year when we followed Fatality to the frozen hinterlands of Sweden to witness a digital version of Woodstock called a land party. 6,000 young people lugged their desktops through the snow to this convention center where they hooked them up together and played video games for three days and three nights with only occasional breaks for sleep. It's such an eerie sight, big, huge hall, acre after acre after acre of computer screens. Yeah. What's the attraction? What's that all about? The reason why these events happen is because you want to meet the person in real life. You play on the internet all the time, and you see their name, but you don't know what they look like. You don't know what they're, real, uh, you know, what they're really like in person. It's become a huge subculture, comprised mostly of young men that spend more money on video games than they do on music or going to the movies. A community of interest big enough to attract prize money, advertising revenue, and merchandising deals from companies peddling computers, video games, and soft drinks. All desperate to sell them something if they ever get up from their video games. And no one is better positioned to make a killing than Jonathan Wendell. Eight, seven, six. He's just launched his own brand of fatality products, mouse pads, keyboards, and headsets built specifically for video gaming all done with the help of his marketing guru, Mark Walden. How much money is there in all this? How much is Jonathan going to make? Uh, millions of dollars. 
millions of dollars. So you're making him into you're making him into a sports star. For the new millennium comes a new sportsman, the e-sportsman. So he's the first uh, cyber athlete, so to speak. You know, you look back 50 years from now, and they'll, there had to be somebody at the turn of the century that played baseball. There had to be a Babe Ruth and a, uh, a Ty Cobb. There has to be a Jonathan Fatality Wendell. You think he's the, the Babe Ruth of the 21st century? I'm, I think definitely. I think Jonathan will go down as the guy who basically brought gaming as a sport mainstream. Amidst all this hype, agents and promoters are already scouting the next generation of stars. No fledgling sport is complete without a prodigy, and in professional video gaming, that mantle has fallen to seven-year-old Victor DeLeon III, a.k.a. Little Poison. You're right on top of me. <laughs> How would you rate me as an opponent? Bad. Bad. <laughs> How bad? Super bad. Super bad. <laughs> okay. Little Poison is too young to have a paper route, yet he's already won $2,000 playing in tournaments against adults. And he has signed an exclusive deal with Sundance Di Giovanni and Mike Sepso, who run Major League Gaming, which organizes tournaments and helps clients land endorsement deals. He's seven years old. What's he going to endorse? Happy Meals? Uh, he's got, yeah, you know, but the crazy thing is, is, Maybe, is yeah. you know, it's, there are crazier endorsers out there. And it's, it, it, it's, he represents something which a lot of people right now are trying to figure out how to grab hold of. Last November in New York, Vitality was trying to grab hold of another world championship in his fifth different game. But this time, he entered the finals as the underdog against his chief nemesis, and reigning champion in painkiller, a 20-year-old Dutchman known as Vu. Gentlemen, take your seats. It was the culmination of a 10-city, $1 million world tour organized by the Cyber Athlete Professional League. After falling behind early in the tournament, Fatality mounted a valiant comeback. Fatality has Vu on the rope. He does! With his back against the wall, he came up clutch, and all of that experience paid off. The first prize was $150,000, the biggest check of his career, and a sum that should go a long way towards finally impressing his mother. You know what? I'm pretty sure they're impressed, um, but, uh, you know, the day I drive up in a Ferrari in front of the house, that's going to be the day that I'm going to say I did it. I told you so. Yeah, that's the day. That'd be a nice day.